Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Happy 2020. I'm so excited for this year and I just wanted to make a video now that I'm through 2019 and on to more healthy years to come. I wanted to make a video and kind of just say hi again and say wow last year was a year of transformation and intense growth for me and just what I've learned from it because I think everything that I've gone through I used to think that it was something personal to me and it was something that you know nobody could relate to and yes we all have our own fabrication of you know the human journey but it's all all the same lessons all the same you know struggles and joys and pains and you know blossoming moments they're all universal and i think for me what i've learned going through um, challenges this last year is that you know sometimes there is great contrast in the life experience but it's there to bring us closer to ourselves and closer to our you know greatest teaching moments and that's really how I see this now is that I've gone through a lot of really big teaching moments this year and the biggest thing that I learned is how much I have lived my life in fear. Now, I don't mean that every day I've been, you know, like ridden with fear for my entire life, but I think I've been confronted with the idea of fear in its many um, cloaks and I have been able to look at them in the face and say, wow, you know, I've done a number on myself by living in fear and this is what it does. Now, I think the human journey presents many obstacles that we each have to navigate through. Some of them I think we are confronted with in, you know, this lifetime. It's like a first first look at this lesson um, and I think there are things that we have to continue to work on from other lifetimes and that is what we call karma and that's my definition of karma it's not necessarily something bad that we did that comes back you know to bite us in the butt I think karma can be both positive and negative and that we create good karmas when we do good deeds in the world. Now this year I'm very excited to be starting to move forward and and you know past these fear, past these blockages, past these things that have created physical illness for me and to you know continue on my path and continue um, doing good deeds for my friends, my community, for the world. Um, it just, it's very humbling to me to have seen myself be, just go to the very lowest of lows where, you know, I had actually, you know, created uh, so many different negative, uh, emotions for myself that, um, created me illness de dealing with migraines and it led me uh to uh, i mean so many spiritual uh <laughs> discoveries within myself but also it created an opening for me to understand this this contrast this thing that i'm talking about where in order to understand the light, you have to understand the darkness. And my, my teacher, Master Lin, um, told me that four years ago. And I didn't totally understand it until this year, this past year, where it was like, it was like a full surrender, full, okay, just... If this is what it's going to be, then 
helped me to make through it. That was like my mantra for 2019 was just give me the strength to endure this. And, um, you know, I wouldn't, I've said this many times on Facebook, if my friends are watching this that watch my Facebook posts, you would have seen more recent updates of my health stuff and what I've been, my ramblings, I guess. But you guys would have seen, you know, that, that journey and um, I just, you know, I've said so many times, like, I wouldn't take it back because I think, you know, having had this deep, dark night of the soul and just starting to come out of it now, I have such an appreciation for the light and for everyday things, you know, it's like now my heart is content if I just have like, if I have a moment of peace, I'm, I'm not looking outside of that. I don't want anything more. I'm not, I'm not like feeling this like intense need for all these things anymore. It's just, it's less of a searching and more of a like, ah, okay, I'm here, and I'm alive, and I'm feeling peaceful, and that is the greatest gift that I could possibly ever have, is just to feel peaceful, and to have that be my, you know, like, <laughs> new normal would be incredible. So it's just tipped the scales towards, you know, like, really being grateful for very little mundane things, and um yeah really incredible surrender and the other lesson that i learned this past year was you know when you ask for help when you when you reach out to the divine you say i've got nothing left you know give me give me this medicine help me to um have the strength to get through this or um whatever your prayer may be you need to open your heart to receive it in whatever way the divine wants you to have it. And sometimes that comes in unexpected ways. And sometimes it will challenge your ego to step aside because it will come in the form of a person that you would not expect, or it will come in the form of, of um, you, for example, a doctor giving you the right medicine or, um, you know, it will challenge you to, to, to receive in the way that, you know, you need it. So I really had to kind of look at where I judge other people or where I have, um, you know, maybe unknowingly judged myself because, you know, I had fears about certain things. For example, you know, um, I had to meet the fear this year of, you know, trusting in a doctor and having a lot of situations where I had taken medications prior that did not go well or my body rejected it. I had a lot of fear around getting help in that way and um, being able to kind of turn my trust over to a doctor and to say, you know, please help me to see what I need right now to heal. And um, what I discovered is that, you know, a lot of earth angels have come on my path to help me through a challenging time. And, and it really just shows me that even when you complete, you can feel completely alone, there's always something, you know, when you're making that prayer um, in your heart every day to keep you focused on your goals, keep you focused on your purpose, it does, you know, there are little whispers that can, you know, weave through your day that you don't want to miss. And um, for me, I have a really good friend that uh, calls me just about every morning to meditate with me. And, you know, no matter if I'm in horrible pain or um, whether I'm feeling good or anything in between, she's there to 
meditate with me and I just that's been such a complete blessing to be able to have that space space with a friend that um just gives you just as much room as you need to to grow to grow and um hold the space even when you're when you're suffering I learned about holding space for things that you don't like um things that you don't like about yourself fears resistance um the ability to hold the space for something that is that is so hard for me to love has been really important and i i learned that i stopped trusting my body i learned that i didn't give it enough credit as to how amazing it was really performing um that it's really important to love your body and when you don't love your body then it screams back at you and it's not that it's breaking down it's that it needs attention and it needs needs you to look at it and love it and you know i've heard so many times that you need to love your pain and i was never able to do that until i was literally on a bed getting a nerve block getting a needle poked through my head to my <laughs> to my bone that I made this discovery I had like this out-of-body experience and I realized my body is getting me through something that my mind couldn't get me through and my spirit got me through something that I didn't think it could and so it, it forced me to look at that and say whoa you know take a look at yourself and keep yourself in check because you know those messages that you're sending yourself do show up in your body and it's really important to hold space for the things that you fear the things that you don't want to look at um, I'm really trying to see my body as an amazing thing that is working really hard to to keep me here on earth and and that it's doing this these amazing things without me telling it to. And that in itself has changed the the script for me about what pain is and what suffering is. And that also goes for emotional pain. Emotional pain is another version of that where, you know, I spent literally years in meditation saying, take away my anxiety um, because I felt like I was less of a person by having anxiety where you know, now I'm kind of seeing that in order for me to transform anything, I do have to have, um, find a way to love what is. And that's the hardest thing. How do you transform something if you have to love it first? Well, that's the pickle, right? Is you have to be willing to, um, see a different perspective and you have to be willing to look at what that um, outer reflection, what that outer symptom is caused to inside and you have to be willing to with a compassionate ear as you would to a friend um, understand why you know why why that part of you is screaming so holding space for for my suffering has been ex extremely um, profound and difficult for me. <laughs> but ultimately, I think that what I discovered through that is um, there's nothing wrong with where you are right now. And <laughs> the way that I say that, it I mean, a lot of people might say, well, yeah, of course there's nothing wrong with with growth and with you know the journey and of course there's nothing wrong with being you know being with yourself even if you're not where you want to be 
but that's easier said than done, you know, especially if you're dealing with something that is so pervasive in your world that you can't escape it. And that's what happened with my migraine headaches is I, I, you know, I, I got to the bottom of a cycle, a spiritual cycle that has caused me over and over and over and over and over again to get sick. And I've recognized that it's not only happened in this life, it's happened in other lifetimes. And the lesson was for me that I get sick every time I feel that the world is caving in on me or that I don't have control or that I cannot handle whatever is going on in my world. So throughout the years, it had, I, I had always blamed it on something whether it was school, it was usually school, um, and I always got sick. Now, this is at least the third conscious um, repeat of this scenario that I am aware of. This is the third one um, where I felt like I was going to exit the planet and not metaphorically physically felt like I was dying now what I've realized <laughs> after going through um, this lesson many times I realized that I don't actually end up dying um, what actually ends up happening is that my body is um, it is almost like getting rid of or transforming the um, metaphor of that, it, the metaphorical death in my life, a piece of me, but not me as a soul. <laughs> so that was like pretty crazy because I realized quite some time ago that I was in a pattern that I didn't want to be in, but it wasn't making the pain go away. It wasn't making the suffering go away. No matter how many doctors I went to, it just seemed like nothing was working and um, and it ended up getting me to the point of what I had mentioned a few minutes ago about the nerve block and um, Botox treatment and such and such. Um, people will weigh in, they do, they have, they will continue to weigh in on you know, what they think I should do just because I put myself out there on the internet and you know, I respect that people want to help me and almost feel a duty to in some cases. I've been there, I've done that to other people as well where I felt like I understood where they were and I felt like I knew something that could help them. One thing that I want to say and I say this because now I've learned my lesson with other people is every journey is so individual and you know the things that I talk about on here are symptoms of you know a spiritual journey that is so personally my own and you know whether you're dealing with migraine headaches or an emotional crisis or cancer or whatever pick anything you know, it's something that that soul has to work through on their own. And although it is very appreciated that, you know, loved ones and friends and family and, you know, people on the internet want to weigh in, it's almost like, you know, what there's no validity in that in, in some sense because, you know, Though, you know, maybe taking vitamins is a good idea for someone who has migraines. I recognize that as, you know, this is a symptom of, you know, this greater thing here. So, I, I've i been really overwhelmed in so many ways um, sharing this journey with people because of that response, but also because it forces me to continue to look at my progress and to, you know, continue to be able to 
support myself when it's um, maybe going less <laughs> less fast than I would like it to. I would like to just say, you know what, I've cracked the code, guys. I know how to get enlightened, and I'm going to share with you all the secrets. I would love to say that, but but this is this is what enlightenment looks like. You know, it it isn't that way, and it shouldn't be that way because, you know, my book, Teachings from God, it says it um, pretty clearly. There is no 12-step process for enlightenment, and it's so true. True, we look for it, and... You know, in the middle of me having such intense pain, living in level se level seven pain every single day with no break for six plus months, you know, over a year actually, it was like, yeah, you know, you can imagine how much I held myself in a state of I need to figure this out. I need to figure this out. I need to do something what's what what can i do who can i call who can i pay i was just like get rid of this well as you can imagine that is not what has gotten me <laughs> better um i i continue to um see every day how i am the one to get myself to a place in my life that i enjoy and that i love and and I, I have so much more motivation, curiosity, and discipline, and um, clarity now that I didn't have about that. And I've stepped into my power in such a, such a big way this year. And it's like, I feel like I've had to be in a cave and just like cope <laughs> cope and like it looks like nothing's happening on the outside but on the inside it's one of those things where you're just like you're cooking and you're getting ready and you're you're priming things and you're you know like there's a lot of work that gets done in that time um i feel like i'm going all over the place but it's like just come through me so i'm gonna keep talking i think um, my last video, I was still really in the middle of all of that, and I didn't have enough um, stabilization to really say, like, okay, I feel like things are starting to settle down. Um, now they are settling down. Thank goodness I've gotten um, some really some really great help from the Mayo Clinic and I've been there three about three times now three or four times I think four times and I can't say enough good things about you know my positive experiences there and you know that's the other thing that I learned is um I think maybe I already mentioned this but like Take the help you can get in whatever form that it is being given to you. The universe gives you what you need and it comes in unexpected ways. And and yeah, for me, like to trust in those doctors and to, you know, lean on people to, to the degree that I had to um, really made me surrender like more than I ever was able to <laughs> before and um, you know I, I've I've had relief and I'm finally feeling that you know the the pain right now is manageable every day where I can start to think about you know um, some of these things that I need to, to continue to transform in my life and I don't know what's going to happen. I don't I don't know if I will return doing channeled readings. I don't know if I'm going to write another channeled book. I don't know what I'm going to do for work when I ever get back to it. Um, I want to move my life forward. I want to create this new paradigm of myself. It's terrifying, but also just exciting just I'm ready for 
I'm ready for it. I want to be excited about life again. I want to um, continue to be in the world with people and learn new things about myself and grow and feel excited about all the potentials that I can create. And um, as much as everyone believes in me, it's been my journey to believe in me. And I think that I'm starting to see that I am more powerful than I think I am. But every day is a new discovery of that and being willing to do that even when it's scary. I'm taking very small steps. Um, I've learned to not push myself this year that there is wisdom in where you are and you don't need to try to push yourself because you can actually paralyze yourself if you push yourself and for somebody that has you know trust issues or you know PTSD in my case it doesn't work to push you have to you have to you have to honor where you are in this moment and I I have seen the beauty in the horrible pain yeah I was telling a friend today about you know, there, there was a week and a half where I was in level eight pain, just constantly. And I, I told myself I was gonna get on the treadmill and I was gonna listen to Joel Osteen and I was going to um, let go and let God. And I'm on the treadmill going real, real, real slow, granny slow, listening to Joel Osteen, you know, level eight migraine pounding like crying because i'm depressed and feeling hopeless and in all of that there's just i mean the level of surrender in those moments that i've had this year and for long periods of time too it's like i mean there's nothing comparable to that there's no way that that wisdom could have been transferred to me without me having that direct experience. And that's where I think I have faith in becoming a healer. That's where I have faith in, you know, the path that I'm going towards because there is that, that depth that, that tells me that I'm, I'm doing it for a reason. I don't know if any of you have felt that on your own journeys, but, um, I get these feelings and I don't mean this like in an egotistical way but I get these feelings like I could be like I could be somebody big like that I could be on Super Soul Sunday you know with Oprah or I could I could be like an Elizabeth Gilbert in my own right you know like I just get this feeling like I'm made for that, but I've been paralyzed by fear for so long and I, I have, I've been paralyzed to the extent where I, I can't like leave my house, I can't do things, I can't, I can't even, like the best I can do is imagine it. And I'm starting to feel like that's exactly why I created the sickness and that's exactly why I had to walk through it. And that's exactly why I had to have the nerve block where I was the only one that could get through it and to be able to understand that my body and my spirit can do it even when everything in, in your physicality is screaming at you that it can't. Just that's like the metaphor for my entire year. The last year is like just having no trust and then walking through the fire and, and starting to, to see that yes it does work out yes you can do it yes you are doing it and and now 2020 is here and we've got 2020 2020 vision 2020 vision this year so everything that you've been trying to clarify is now coming and it not only is it here already but it's it's here to be manifested it's here to be enacted it's here to be solidified in your life Amen. Yeah. Maybe I should be a ne the next Joel Osteen. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. I would never do that. Joel Osteen is one of a kind. 
but yes that's my message that's my year in a nutshell that's why i learned i just wanted to share that with you and um thanks for tuning in thanks for being part of this family as always and i hope you maybe learn something from of, of yourself from my little vlog and feel free to definitely join the conversation um, down below so i appreciate you guys love you guys and stay tuned for my next video if you have any ideas or anything that you'd like me to talk about in the sense of spiritual growth spiritual journey hero's journey etc let me know all right bye, -bye.